Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to an all new purchase or pass. It's been a minute since we've talked about new makeup releases, so I thought that would be a fun video for today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kelly. On this channel, we love focusing on cruelty-free beauty, so if that sounds good to you, make sure that you subscribe, and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with some ColourPop. Like I said, it's been a minute since I filmed a purchase or pass, so there's been a lot of ColourPop releases. I feel like we don't want to spend too long touching on every single one of them, or that would be way too much of the video, but... I have to talk about the Lizzie McGuire collection because I think I'm psychic. I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding. So if you guys watched my 2021 makeup predictions video that I posted in January, I talked about a lot of things that I thought we would see in 2021. And I mentioned with ColourPop, I had a feeling they would keep doing collabs like all year long. And I even talked about some of the different IP that I thought they would collaborate with, and I said Lizzie McGuire. And the reason I suspected this is because ColourPop has had a very long-standing relationship with Disney. They've done so many Disney collabs. But also, ColourPop has really focused on like millennial nostalgia, like Y2K era products. By the way, in this video, you might see me the whole time tilting my head sideways. Whenever I wear a braid, I feel like I'm incapable of keeping my head straight. I have to talk like this, so I'm gonna try not to do that, but no promises. But with that, I had a feeling that they might collaborate with Lizzie McGuire, but it, I was so shocked when I saw it. The amount of tags that I got on my Instagram of you guys saying, wait a minute, Kelly, they really did collaborate with Lizzie McGuire. Oh, I gotta scoot over. I'm gonna be mad at myself editing this, let me scoot. But this isn't really what I was expecting. I thought that the color story would be closer to her cartoon self in the show. So blues, pinks, yellows. This is a lot more green, a lot more like neon. So I thought that was pretty fun. I think this is one of the most fun color stories we've seen from ColourPop in a while since they've really been going hard on the monochromatic color stories, which is fun, but it's not as creative. This feels like very intentional from a color story, so I love that. Another thing I also mentioned in my makeup predictions video was that I thought ColourPop would release a new size product. So they had focused so heavily on the nine pans for the last few years, I said they're probably gonna go another route. And they've done that a lot this year. We've got the five pans, but they also just introduced these four pans. So they did a whole launch with different quads. I think these are fun. It's so funny too, because a few years ago, if you would have shown me a makeup quad, I would not have gotten excited about it. But these days, I'm really into quads. Quads and five pans. For me, I'm like, that's a great number of shades. I think I used to do my eyeshadow. I don't think, I did. I used to do my eyeshadow with way more shades than I do now. I used to do like cut creases and then do like the front of the cut crease this color, the middle of this color, like so many shades. But these days, like a standard eye look for me, Three shades, how many shades am I wearing today? Three, three shades on my eyes today. That's a great number for me, three to four. So I love a quad. Looking at these, there's not a color on here that I don't have. I would say for a lot of makeup lovers that have a decent size collection, these probably wouldn't be adding anything new. So for that reason, I'm gonna skip out on it, but I do think as a launch, it makes a lot of sense and they could go a lot of directions with quads, which segues us into one more color pop. They're doing face palette quads. So there's not a lot of info on this yet, but I saw Makeup by Treens who, who runs a fantastic Instagram account. And she always, she's like very in with color pop. She has all the new launches early. She's many of the color pop swatches that you see shared on color pop's page and on trend moods page. A lot of them come from her or makeup just for fun. Those two make amazing swatches. They're always like the first ones to get them out. So a lot of the swatches that you see are probably coming from one of those two gals. But these are the face quads. I didn't see this coming. We actually have a lot more quads and just face palettes to talk about in today's video. And I did not really see this resurgence in face palettes coming, at least not this soon. So we'll talk about that some more as the video goes on. Okay, two very recent celebrity makeup brand announcements. Well, celebrity beauty brands, not strictly makeup, but we've got two. The first one being from Cardi B, and then very recently we saw the announcement that Olivia Palermo is coming out with a beauty brand. Now, I did my most recent video in my Makeup Industry Deep Dive series 
all about makeup brand incubators and I talked really in depth in that video about how so many celebrities are able to come up with makeup brands so quickly and part of the reason we're seeing so many is because of this new incubator system. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I dive really deep into it and I think it I think it's a really interesting topic. So if you want to hear more about celebrity brands, I will leave that link down below. With these two, you know, I got to be honest, it's rare that a celebrity brand gets me excited because there's just so much competition these days. I'm like, mm, can you really bring something that new to the table? But I also applaud anyone that wants to start their own brand. If that's something you want to do, I say go for it. But it just takes a lot for me to become excited about a lot of their products. So with Olivia Palermo, you guys, I remember I used to be obsessed with the Hills. That was like when I was in high school when the Hills was out and then... Right when that ended, they did their spin-off show with Whitney called The City and Olivia Palermo was in it and I remember watching that and it was so funny too when I first saw this, annou this announced, I was like, Olivia Palermo, I know that name, I know that name and I had to look it up and I was like, that's what she's from. So I'll keep my eye on that with Cardi B's line. We don't really know much, she just filed her name. I have heard some discussion thinking that maybe it's going to be a hair care line and I think that would make a lot of sense. I also think that's an area that is perhaps a better direction right now than makeup because the makeup, especially celebrity makeup lines, there are so many, that's such a saturated market, but hair, still saturated, but not as much. And I think that's an area that she can really make a splash in, so. I'll keep my eyes on both of those. Makeup Revolution is doing a collaboration with Aristocats, which more than anything makes me want to log into Disney Plus and rewatch Aristocats because I definitely have not watched that since I was like five. But back in the day, I remember really loving that movie. And I mean, this collab is cute. They have gotten a ton of collabs that I would not have necessarily expected to see from Makeup Revolution. They've done quite a few, they've done a few Disney by now, yeah, because they did Nightmare Before Christmas. They've done a few rounds with friends. Another one that I predicted in my predictions video, I'm waiting to see them do a collab with The Office. I'm waiting for someone to do it. I know a while ago there was an indie brand that did like an Office inspired collab, but to my knowledge, no one has collaborated officially with actually The Office. And that's something I could see for Makeup Revolution. I didn't really see Aristocats coming, but it's cute. I do just feel like all of their collaborations look the same. Like they come with this giant jumbled palette where I look at it and I'm like, I just don't look at it and get inspired. I don't look at it and see where the look is. I don't know if that made sense. But the paw prints and the design, super cute. Packaging adorable. I get it. I get it. Urban Decay is coming out with a new powder, which I didn't necessarily see coming because... About two years ago, they launched the brush off powder. Uh, also kind of around that time frame, they launched the all nighter powder. That one is a pressed powder and now they have this loose powder. I will say though, the description is right up my alley. They say it's a lightweight vegan face powder with softening translucent matte finish, sets makeup, minimizes shine all day long. It's gonna retail for $33. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm starting to like powder these days. I'm starting to be excited by powder releases. <laughs> I don't know that I'm necessarily gonna run to pick this one up, but maybe if I do see some great reviews on it, I might be tempted, but I think I'm probably good on powders. And personally, I prefer pressed powders just for the ease of them. Loose powders, in theory, it, it's like, well, it's not that much more difficult because you just unscrew the cap and tap in, but there's something so messy about them that makes them unappealing to me. So I still prefer pressed powders whenever possible, but this is new from Urban Decay. A new collection that I think makes a ton of sense is this one. This is the Besame Marilyn Monroe collection. I'm almost surprised they didn't do this sooner. This makes complete sense with Besame. They make such beautiful products. And whenever they do a collaboration, they really stay true to whatever concept they're collaborating with. Whereas some brands, I mean, even going back to the Makeup Revolution Aristocats collection, it's like, if I didn't see the actual pictures of the Aristocats on it and know that that's what they were collaborating with, I would think it was just like a cat themed collection. <laughs> but there's just so much thought that goes into these Besame collections. Even the lip products that are gonna be in this line were created to look as similar as possible to the actual lip colors that Marilyn Monroe wore. And I know there are a lot of people out there that are huge Marilyn Monroe fans, and I feel like that is like the 
perfect audience for this. They would eat this right up. And this is what I like seeing from collaborations where it doesn't just feel like a money grab. Like, okay, let's collaborate with Aristocats and then put some cat paws on this. <laughs> no offense to Makeup Revolution. I mean, it's cute. But this feels like they wanted to do this line because they wanted to do it well. I'm late to talk about these KKW duos. <laughs> But let's just talk about them for a second. So Kim Kardashian's makeup brand came out with these eye contour duos. $24 a piece for two shades, which is, is a lot. Something about this almost feels like a scam, but I guess scam wouldn't technically be the correct word because you're buying a product and then you're getting said product. So the reason I'm like, mm, I feel like they're trying to be a little sneaky here is like, oh, this is an eye contour. Like... It gives me Becca No Pigment Foundation vibes where they're like, this primer, it's actually a foundation. Where in this, they're like, these two plain matte eyeshadows, they're actually contour shades for your eyeballs. Part of me is like, okay, that's kind of a cool concept. And then the other part of me is like, well, I also have a bronzer and an actual contour shade that I could just put on my eyes instead of spending $24 for a mini version of it. I'm so curious to see if these like sold really well or did not. I would assume they did not. Okay, we have to talk about Anastasia Beverly Hills. They were my favorite brand quite a few years ago, like 2015, 2014, even 2016. They were like that tip top brand for me. They could do no wrong. And I've heard so many people kind of echo the same sentiment about Anastasia Beverly Hills. And then it felt like maybe they fell off a little bit, but I was rooting for them so much. I was like, 2021 is going to be the year like they did some weird things the last couple years, but they seemed it said It seemed like they were taking a bit of a break Not a break, but they were stepping back to really focus on what was gonna be that next big product And I had so much faith that like they were gonna give us something amazing like the next big launch from them was gonna be big and then this is what it was This is what it was makeup remover wipes Oh, you guys, you know the meme of Tyra Banks on America's Next Top Model when she's like, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. That's really how I feel about Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm like, makeup remover wipes? Makeup remover wipes? For years there, Anastasia Beverly Hills was at the forefront of the trends. They were starting the trends. Like, I know we still all talk about it, but modern renaissance, the funny thing is when that palette came out in, uh, what was it, 2014, 2015? I remember thinking, I don't know if I could wear that. It's so colorful. And I look back and I laugh because I'm like, colorful, Kelly, really? But then every brand started to do those reds, the, the rich warm tones. And with subculture, I know that didn't really go over the way they expected, but at the time that was like, whoa, look at all this color. And now we see a ton of color. Same with highlighters. I mean, I would say really kicking off the highlighter trend was the Balm and Becca, but still, Anastasia Beverly Hills was definitely at the top of that. Liquid lipsticks, even though I think theirs are terrible, they like they were either for years they're either starting the trends or they were getting there right on time, like right in the beginning, which is what you have to do. But makeup remover wipes, I, I have no words. So, anyways, following that, their next launch that they just announced, face palettes. And you know what? My first thought again was, Anastasia Beverly Hills, you're so behind the trends. Like you came out with makeup remover wipes a couple weeks ago and now a face palette. No, we're not really buying face palettes anymore. I'm generalizing. I'm generalizing. That's not always true. But then I started to think maybe, maybe this is what's happening now because right around the time that they announced this, ColourPop announced theirs. Artist Couture announced their face palettes, and now I'm sitting here wondering, are we about to see the comeback of face palettes? I don't know. Personally, I don't buy face palettes anymore. I don't really use them. They, for me, based on my collection, the way I store my collection, I don't end up reaching for them as often as I want to, but I can see how for someone with a minimal makeup collection, they make a lot of sense. And that's why there's like a little part of me that's like, are we going back to a trend of makeup face palettes? Because we're seeing makeup trends become so simplified, like skin tints, low coverage products, minimal makeup, blush bronzer duos, like products that are two in one. So 
maybe, maybe we are about to see face palettes, but I gotta be honest, this, if we are, I didn't see this coming. You didn't see that at all in my 2021 makeup predictions video. Let me know your thoughts on any of these new releases down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.